previously, we looked at how you can conserve momentum in different kinds of situations as long as there's an interaction between two objects and there's a force between these two, whether contact force or whatever force. So did you know that actually um, collisions specifically can be sorted between two types along a spectrum? What do I mean by that is, you see this here, this slider? I can choose this collision to be elastic, fully elastic, or fully inelastic, or somewhere in between. We just call this inelastic. La. So what does that mean? Okay, let's look at elastic. Recap a bit. Huh? Total momentum here will be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.51. Total kinetic energy, 0 0.25. Okay, let's collide and see if anything change. Eh, nothing changed. Huh? Total momentum is still 1. Kinetic energy is still the same. What if we change this to inelastic? No, let's do somewhere in, mini, in the middle. Ah, uh, inelastic. See, got anything changed? Especially, pay close attention to this kinetic energy value. Let's go. Boing. <gasps> Why the kinetic energy decrease? What happened to my kinetic energy? Hmm. It seems like in the process, we have lost energy. Where the energy go? Well, I don't know. Maybe to sound. Maybe the ball is squishy. Okay. Well, now I'm curious. What happens if I drag this slider? All the way to inelastic. Perfectly inelastic. What do you think is going to happen? So this is a very special case. Two ball come along. Wait, 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 wait. Let's reset this first. Uh. Make them faster a bit. Ah, this is better. 0 0.25 at first. Uh. Okay, we, we make them collide. You see what happened? Collide. Boing. Huh? They stop work. They, what? They just stop moving. Uh. Nani? We are now at zero joules. Wait, wait, wait. Let's retry again to see whether correct or not. Let's give them some unequal velocity. Maybe this one. Okay, let's go. Collide. Boing. Oh, they stick together and travel together and bye-bye. Return the balls. Okay, sure. So something tells us perfectly inelastic, you have them stick together only if it's perfectly inelastic. If it's somewhere in between, you lose energy, but this like that law lose energy law, but they don't stick together. Uh, only when perfectly inelastic over here, you stick. Perfectly elastic, no change in kinetic energy. Let's summarize the characteristics of the types of collisions, especially uh, to help us deduce. Okay, elastic collision. So before, I, I just draw very quickly. Lah. Before, maybe you have two objects moving here. One and two, they're moving together. Let's call this initial velocity u. Initial velocity u2. Don't forget, positive sign, negative sign, especially if you choose to the right as positive and things that move to the left as negative. This is what we define now, okay? Then after collision, a couple of things could happen depending on how, depending on what their mass is and what their velocities are. Make sure uh, momentum is conserved. So some possible uh, movement is that they may move apart or they could even move in the same direction depending on their mass. One and two, they both move in the same direction. Possible So You go and play with the lab and see. But generally, we call this final velocity and final velocity v. Inelastic collision, before, okay, let's assume they move in the same uh, opposite direction. They can move in the same direction also, like many combination one. After collision, they could move apart. They could move in the same direction. So same direction, or they move apart, or they stick together and move together. So many possibilities. Wow. Okay, don't memorize then. Make sure you can do calculation to check. But note that the one where they stick together is only one specific case where we call it is perfectly inelastic. Only if perfectly inelastic. Then they will stick together like this. The purpose of drawing the diagram is just to remind you. Lah. Only one case where they stick together. Not simply, simply fall and love stick together. Okay. But in all the cases you can draw, if there is no external force, we say whether elastic or inelastic, whether collide, stick together, fly apart, fly together, all this momentum is conserved. Momentum is conserved. In other words, the total momentum before collision is equal to the total momentum after collision. And it's the same for either type of collision, so might as well just copy paste. Momentum is always still conserved. The equations you use, though, will be a little bit different. For the first one, uh, if you want to 
use the equation, it will be m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals to m1 v1 plus m2 v2, for example, for this case. Um, but if they stick together, oh, I, I write a special case here. Huh? If perfectly inelastic means they will move to the right at the same velocity v. Kind of treat as one object moving. So if it's perfectly inelastic, you have m1 u1, m2 u2 equals to m1 plus m2 times a common velocity that they move together. Stick together already. Ma. So just V lo, next to my head here. V. Okay? So that's for momentum. Now how do you tell these two apart? Is you look at the kinetic energy. Like just now we saw, right? Kinetic energy can be conserved, can be not conserved. So let's draw out the spectrum of uh, if you are on the elastic side versus if you are on the... Oh my, this is a bit crooked. Inelastic side. So on one end, if you are elastic collision, perfectly elastic, what is the kinetic energy like? So here we will say that uh, kinetic energy is conserved. Uh, so what does that mean? Okay, so, so it means the, the total kinetic energy before anything happened, all the ball moving right at all their in kinetic energy together, equals to the total kinetic energy after F for final, after the collision, after everything happened. Okay, so that's what it means by conserve. Ah. And by the way, in case you forgot already, kinetic energy is calculated by half mv square. That's how we find the kinetic energy of every single moving object. So for example here, you have half m... What are we doing? Half mu1 square plus half mu2 square, for example. So let's write it out. This could be half m u one square plus half m u two square and we'll use this to test how do you test whether it's elastic or inelastic you can check this out now note that elastic only happens here just perfectly elastic you can use this on the other hand if you are anywhere in between this whole spectrum we call it inelastic Elastic is only at this, this this spot here. Everything else we call inelastic. So for inelastic collisions, kinetic energy is not conserved before after collisions. So you can say, for example, if you add up all the kinetic energy of all the objects before collision, it will not be the same as the total kinetic energy after the collision. And usually it will be less than. Uh. So you can say not equal to or because some energy is lost. So you have a lot of energy in the beginning, but then you lose some in the collision and you are left with lesser energy at the end. Once again, a reminder that perfectly inelastic collision is this spot we call perfectly inelastic. So where has my energy gone? Another note, you can say, explain why the, the energy is not conserved. You can say, energy is lost um, or converted to things like heat, to things like sound, or, or, or deformation of the objects that are being colliding, <laughs> objects that are being collided. So when we think of energy loss in sound, tam, collision, something got sound. Okay, sure, it gets hot. But what about deformation? So these, these, these guys, they like to take slow-mo at 100,000 FPS, and they took a golf ball, put it in a little pressurized air cannon, and they fired a golf ball out. So out it comes, it goes, and collides again a super solid iron, and see what happens to the ball. Whoa, what is that? So they were just very shocked by it because look at the golf ball, it's supposed to be hard, but what is it doing? Boing, boing, boing. It is doing this interesting um, deformation and that's where the energy is lost. The ball actually gets hot if you squash it like that a lot. 
And they really tried to break the golf ball by shooting at higher and higher speeds. We can, you can go watch the video if you're curious to know how they did the experiment. But we will learn more about deformation of solids, point, 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 in the later chapter. Anyway, um, you can also use this kinetic energy test. This is a test to test whether your object is elastic or inelastic. Now, the last thing you need to know is only if it's elastic collision, perfect. I mean, there's only one elastic collision. There is one special equation that you can use. Since kinetic energy is conserved, this equation is what we call the relative velocity equation. Ooh, what is this equation about? This equation says if it is perfectly elastic, that means you can conclude that the velocity or relative velocity of approach how fast are they going towards each other is equal to exactly the velocity not enough space idea i'm just gonna write vel of separation now there are many forms of this equation in textbooks if you google online i suggest you stick to this one equation because different equations have different sign conventions so for our sign convention i recommend is to find the velocity of approach, the difference in velocity, you take u1 minus u2 equals to v2 minus v1. Stick to this one. Textbook may write a different thing. Different textbook may write slightly different values, but stick to this. And you must know that we define the system direction as anything that moves to the right is positive. Positive velocity, positive initial final velocity. Anything that moves to the left is negative. Now, let's look at the example to help us understand this. Uh, just a very quick one from MJ16, P11, Q10. Uh, you have two spheres approaching each other along the same straight line. So it's a one-dimensional collision. The speeds are given to us. After the collision, they separate. Now, here's a clue. The collision is perfectly elastic. Elastic? That tells us... Although we don't have the mass, we can't, we, you, you need to know the mass if you want to use the co uh, conservation of momentum, but we don't know that. So if it's perfectly elastic, we can use the relative velocity equation. But if you look at this, you're like, hmm, miss, uh, which one to use? Uh? Should we just memorize and the correct one? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Calm down first. First thing you do is check the signs. Anything that moves to the right is positive. Anything that moves to the left is negative. So now we put our main equation in. What was the one we used just now? U1 minus U2 equals to V2 minus V1, correct? Now we substitute in their values, which means U1 is positive U1. U2 is negative U2. Our V2, I mean, yeah, they want to troll us and they use the same values. Ah, positive Oh, sorry, negative V2. Negative V2. Because you see up here, negative, right? So we plug inside there, negative V2. Plus, positive, whoops, my bad. Negative minus first, minus. Minus a positive V1. So what these things up here is, it's just value to represent speed. Maybe U2 is 6 meter per second. So it just means negative 6 meter per second. And we sub into our general formula. So just be careful of this. Ooh, I just noticed a sign error. My bad. V2 should be positive. They're both moving to the right. What am I thinking? Ah, yeah, positive. Correction, correction. Okay. So now let's conclude this thing and see what's the general final formula. So U1 plus U2 equals to V2 minus V1. So from there, we can choose the equation that will be this one. So remember, stick with the general formula, then substitute in the values or the alphabets with the correct sign, and then only you find your final answer. If you are wondering, Miss, is there a special equation for inelastic collision? Nope. There is no special equation here. It's just only relative loss is only for elastic collisions. So when you think about it in, in our world, actually most collisions in our world is going to be inelastic because everything can deform uh, you go boing boing you lose lose some kind of uh, energy already in whatever form there is 
And one of our all-time favourite is the by the slow-mo guys where they like to take slow-mo pictures and in this video, one guy threw a football in the other guy's face. See what happened to the guy's face? Do you think it's elastic or inelastic collision? Let's go! Boing! Oh my goodness, that's a quite painful slow-mo. So this is the inelastic collision happening here, so definitely got deformation means confirm inelastic already lah. Okay? Now go try out some of the past questions down in the video description below. Test out your understanding for kinetic, uh, kinetic, kinetic energy and how to test whether it's elastic or inelastic. I'll see you in the next few examples video. But that's all for now. Bye bye.